Hey guys, Colin here. We're going to take a look at um, a JavaScript downloader, which I found pretty interesting. Uh, you can find the sample on VT. Uh, here it is. It's got some current detection with antivirus already, uh, just because of the malicious properties that are within the file um, and also what it downloads. Um, this one, this particular sample, uh, at the time of my analysis, was downloading an Emata InfoStealer sample, um, but we're just going to focus on the JavaScript downloading capability within the file. Um, this is some, some real quick analysis, which you can do from a code standpoint, code analysis standpoint which is uh, very useful for you to uh, verify what you might be seeing from a behavioral analysis point of view. So you might just get this piece of JavaScript and execute it within your malware lab, um, but actually it's always good to cross-check from a code analysis point of view that what you're seeing in your lab is actually what the code is designed to do, um, or its full capabilities. Uh, you might see some network indicators, but not all from a behavioral point of view. Uh, so hopefully this analysis will, uh, will be a benefit to you to extract all of the malicious indicators that were intended. Um, so this one was uh, originally reported to VT uh, as DHL reports, something or other .js. Um, Actually, I saw it as a, an O2 themed JavaScript file, but uh, obviously the same hash, so therefore the same contents. Uh, so whatever yours was called, um, we can uh, we can do the same analysis. Uh, so here's the code itself. Um, this is a single line of JavaScript, not very readable at all. Um, we can see there's no line line breaks and there's a pretty minimal white space. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this to a new file first off, uh, just because I don't like working on the original. Um, and then we can use a plugin which I, I use in Sublime, uh, which is called Prettify. And Prettify will take any HTML, CSS, or JavaScript code and will Prettify it if you use the shortcut Command Shift H. Uh, we can do that now and make it into something much more readable. We can see there's an awful lot of variables being defined. Uh, there's a lot of Boolean values. There's lots of uh, integers and hex values and, and all the rest of it. Um, and all of this looks very noisy, uh, probably stuff that we don't really want to uh, spend too much time uh, working out whether this is involved in any of our malicious uh, activity. Um, so let's let's try and look for something which sticks out to us that we can uh, perform some analysis on. Straight away, I see a very big long string here, which is being defined. It's definitely out of the norm uh, for this particular file. Um, so we'll take a look and see what TQHNG has to to offer us. Let's have a look at that one and we can see here that it's also being referenced in a variable called VQ um, where it's taken the, the string's length. Uh, VQ we can have a look at and see oh actually VQ is being referenced in a for loop and we can see the difference in indentation here that Prettify has done for us. Uh, so the body of the for loop uh, has actually been indented and if we scroll down if we scroll down a little bit we can see actually that the uh, the body of the for loop is pretty long, probably like a thousand lines of code, um, and that's an awful lot of noise that we we don't necessarily want to uh, to start debugging line by line. Um, so the for loop it looks like it starts uh, the initial value here is zero, um, goes right up to uh, the length of the or stops uh, just before it hits the length of the uh, the string vq. Uh, and then also jumps in steps of uh, WRKG, and we can see what that is, uh, and that's been defined to the integer value 2. Uh, so in steps of 2, it's going to iterate over the length of our string. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Um, so it's obviously going to perform some kind of um, iteration through the string, and we can work out exactly what that's doing. Let's have a look at our big long variable string again and see where else that's being referenced in the code. And actually, we can see we're in some indented code here, um, and it's being uh, referenced in this variable, PHMMSDMS. Um, and that's a substring being taken of our uh, of our big long string. So through each iteration of the loop here, it's being passed to the substring as the starting point. Uh, we're going to get uh, the length two. So we're going to take the next two characters on each uh, length uh, on each iteration of the loop. We're going to grab the next two characters, then the next two characters, then the next two characters of our big long string. So we're plucking them out in pairs. That's probably uh, indicative that it's going to be treated as hexadecimal. So let's have a look and see where else this particular variable is being referenced. And we can see actually yeah, it's being um, put through the, the parse int routine, uh, which is going to take the string, uh, being, and it's going to get told to treat it as base 16, um, and then return the integer value uh, into this particular variable here. Uh, so we're going to grab a substring um, of length 2, treat it as base 16 or hexadecimal, uh, and give us, the, uh, give us the integer value of that, put, put it into the uh, variable zuudn, and we'll have a look and see where that's being referenced. And we can see here that that uh, particular value is going to be XORed with another value, uh, pdn. So let's have a look and see what pdn is going to be, or where that's going to be referenced. And we can see up here, again, that's going to be, uh, that's the product of... Um, uh, a string qpci which is being passed into parsing again it's being told to treat it as base 16 so ha let's have a look at qpci and we can see that qpci is a substring of uh, another variable qt um, again it's another variable which is being um, 
extracted or iterated over in, in chunks of two. Uh, so we're going to get two characters from the string QT. Let's have a look and see what QT is. Uh, we can see here that's actually a pretty short string um, and then so we're going to get a substring of length 2 from QT we're going to get a substring um, of length 2 from our big long string that we're interested in and we're going to XOR them together uh, and treat the values as, uh, as integers um, and then probably do something with them so that's uh, demonstrative of uh, an XOR routine uh, as we've seen uh, and this looks like to me that this is going to be the key uh, to that XOR routine. So what we can do is actually use a tool from GCHQ which is hosted on GitHub called CyberChef uh, and we can take um, a hexadecimal value uh, which will we will take our big long string which is somewhere up here. Uh, here it is. And then we can also pipe that into the encryption or encoding format of XOR and we can supply it with the key which was QT. Is it gone? Here it is. And we can see actually, yep, indeed, um, those two values, so the, the string uh, XORed with uh, the key 62637953 is being uh, generated um, yet more JavaScript in, it, in its uh, plain text format. So we can save this to a new file, we'll call it out.js. Um, and we'll printify that code and we can see actually what's happening here is um, lots of function declarations uh, so we have get data from URL which looks like it performs some kind of get request get data which has uh, some network indicators in here get temp file path save to temp um, and actually the initial function call here is to get data um, so get data is going to uh, reach out to get data from URL pass it this particular string here which is the URL um, perform a get request, uh, look for a response of 200, and if it gets one, it's going to write back to the caller of the function, the response body. So it uh, looks like here, if it gets a response from 200, uh, you might have seen this in your behavioral analysis, um, the rest of this code block probably won't execute um, if it doesn't get an error. Uh, so you might have only seen this particular line uh, within your proxy logs, uh, but actually if that fails, it looks like it's going to reach out to nextlevelpersuasion.com, and again, if that fails, it's going to reach out to alphastudios.com and look to pull, pull some malicious binary as well. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. We can also see that it's then going to, uh, if we have a look, um, it's going to save temp, save to temp, uh, which uh, generates um, a, a random file name by the looks of things. It calls get temp file path. Um, it performs a request here, math.random to string 36, which is a, a string of 36, of length 36, and it's going to take a substring of length 9 starting at position 2 uh, and append the string.exe to it. Um, it's going to uh, save it to get special folder 2 uh, which we can have a look at here get special folder 2 uh, probably the temp folder system folder so the system folder um, oh sorry beg your pardon number 2 uh, is the temporary folder that's cool um, and then it's going to append that to the the, the uh, temp file name is going to get appended to, appended to that directory as well so it's going to save it in temp some random uh, file name something or other .exe um, and then it's going to write the response body uh, into that file um, looks like after it's done that it's going to start um, create an active x object and it's going to actually run that file with the path specified that it's just generated once it's actually executed the malicious code, uh, looks like it's going to generate some kind of pop-up to the user uh, with uh, with a custom error message. Uh, probably so the user doesn't think that there's anything too fishy going on in the background, um, that something did actually happen or maybe maybe didn't happen that was uh, was maybe benign or there was some error generated. Um, so yeah, that's all good fun. So definitely worth doing. Um, these are the uh, the network indicators you need from this particular sample in order to protect your environment in full. Could be that from a behavioral point of view, that first off you execute the JavaScript in uh, in a live environment, um, so you know with internet access, and you actually only see the first hit to the to this URL, but don't see any others. You could also try disabling your net network adapter as well, um, which would um, uh, mean that you get all of the malicious properties out of it. But also good just to, just to cross check it from a code analysis point of view to make sure that actually what you're seeing in your virtualized environment is actually what the code is designed to do as well. So I hope you find that useful, uh, and we'll uh, take more deep dives on different uh, different samples again in different videos. Okay, thanks.